Hello, and welcome to my new Mesa Guide. This is very needed because I haven't made one in about 10 months as of making this video. So that's neat. And we're also using a very cool strategy of Quincy and Permabrew. First, let's just place the Dart Monkey as low as you possibly can while having the left side of the range border go right through this crack over here. We'll keep this Dart Monkey on first. Then, we place another Dart Monkey right over here, as low as possible, and we want to place him so that when this tree goes right, this little leaf goes right in front of his left pupil. And you'll set this Dart Monkey to last. And then, we have a third Dart Monkey right over here, just as top left as possible, and set him to last as well. If you've gotten these placements and targetings correctly, you should be able to beat rounds 6 and 7 with no issues. And then, for round 8, we'll be placing another Dart Monkey. This guy goes as top left as possible, inside of the rock, right next to the cactus, because for some reason you can do that. I don't understand why, but you can. And set this guy to strong. In the middle of round 10, we'll be placing our hero for this run, Quincy. Just shove him as top left as possible while still being on the ledge over here. Just shove him in that corner. You just have to place him before the massive swarm of blues at the end of the round, so you have time. For round 14, we'll place one druid right over here, just as bottom left as possible. Just shove him right there, and then set him to strong. And then get another druid right over here. This guy goes as top left as possible, and we'll be setting him to strong as well. 14 shouldn't have any problems, so you shouldn't need to use any abilities for any reason. And then for 15, if a green or higher reaches Quincy, you want to use the Rapid Shot ability. This only happens sometimes because of Druid shot timing. Here it happened, sometimes it doesn't happen, it's kind of random. So be ready to use it. And now, we'll be upgrading our right Druid all the way to a 030 Druid of the Jungle. You should be able to afford it on round 21, and set them to first when you've got the upgrade. For 22, upgrade your left druid to a 100 hard thorns. He should absolutely demolish the left side, and nothing should even reach Quincy. And now, we'll also be getting this guy to a druid of the jungle. You can also use a rapid shot on 23, because it seems like you might have to. I'm not entirely sure though. I've never had to use it, but it's po theoretically possible, I guess. In the middle of 27, you should be able to afford your second Druid of the Jungle. And this guy will remain on strong, so we can target all of the leads. Even though we already have two Druids of the Jungle, we still have to buy a third early game tower to be able to deal with camos. And the best tower I've found for this is a 302 Arcane Mastery. So, just place them right over here, as like top right as possible, while still being over here, not over here. And you want to upgrade him to a 202, because Quincy can't even solo all the camos on 33, let alone any of the other rounds before 40 or before we get our next strong camo vision tower. So yeah, you should be able to afford Arcane Mastery in the middle of 34. And once we've got that, we can just 
cruise all the way to round 40. But don't play round 40. For round 40, we have quite a few things to do. First, place this village right over here, just as bottom left as possible, next to Quincy. Well, above Quincy. And then upgrade it to a 002 Monkey Commerce. And then, get a Super Monkey just as bottom left as possible. This guy will end up becoming a Sun Avatar, and he will end up being our most main DPS for the run. And then the final tower we buy on round 40 is a 110 glue gunner set to strong right over here. The druids will insta kill two of the serams from the Moab, and this guy will slow the other two to ensure victory. Also, just use a rapid shot. Trust me, it helps, and is kind of required. And now, we'll upgrade our super to just a 002 before round 42, and we'll leave it like this until round 47, where we do have to use an ability. So I'll see you then. On round 47, use Quincy's Rapid Shot ability to ensure that all of the ceramics just get insta-killed. Yeah, that's it. Before 49, upgrade your super to a 202 Plasma Blast and get your village to Jungle Drums. The reason why we waited on upgrading our super until now is because he is our only source of reliable camo purple popping power, and if you upgrade him to laser and plasma, he can't pop purples, so we need to keep him just firing normal darts until all of the camo purples for basically the entire game are dead. And the last ones are on 48, so yeah. And then on 49, just use a rapid shot when the ceramics come out. Nothing much. Incoming. Apparently round 50 can sometimes get scary. I don't know how or why, but sometimes it just does. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to say. Round 51 should get absolutely destroyed because we have a camo super after all. And then 52 is kind of a weird round because we have to use Quincy's Arrow Storm the instant it comes off of cooldown. It just barely comes off of cooldown fast enough for us to be able to use it on this Moab, so spam very hard. Well, yeah, once you get that, you should be good. And then 53 just wins itself. We don't have to do anything. 53 is an easy round. For 54, use Rapid Shot when one of the Moabs shows up, just so Quincy can blitz it down as fast as possible. And now, we should be able to get Sun Avatar before the second Moab. And now that you've got Sun Avatar, there are no difficult rounds left, and... It's pretty easy all the way till we win. And now, we'll be buying the real MVP of the run, Permabrew. Well, not a Permabrew yet, it's just going to be a 420 Stronger Stimulant Alchemist. We want him to be right here so he prioritizes the Super Monkey, because that's our strongest tower. You should get the Stronger Stimulant before 58, and now we just have one final tower to buy before we start the $65,000 save up for Permabrew. And we'll get it on 61. This final tower is a 023 Moab Glue that we place right over here and set him to strong. 
he absolutely needs to be in the discount village range, or else this run just straight up doesn't work. <laughs> so yeah, those are all of the rounds that we have to do anything until about 75, so I'll see you then. So, on 75, we return to possibly having to do stuff, because if you want, it's not entirely needed, but you can use a rapid shot if you get scared for whatever reason on this first set of clumped BFBs. You shouldn't have to use it, like, here I absolutely destroy it and don't have to, but I don't know, it's theoretically possible that you might possibly have to use this. And then, just to be safe, Aerostorm 76. 100% not needed, but it just makes it that small amount safer. And then, for 77, if you really, really want to, I guess you could use a rapid shot on the BFBs, but that would probably actually hurt because it would anti-stall and we need to get our Storm of Arrows cooldown back for 78, because 100% required to use it on the first wave. If you don't use it, you just straight up die, and you wouldn't want to do that. It's not entirely needed for the second wave of Camo Ceramics, because the Sun Avatar does plus one damage to them because of Ultra Vision, but you can still use it if you'd like. Here, I'm not going to. Also, that is my Discord, not yours. I'm gonna go turn that off now. Seventy nine can seem a bit scary sometimes, but trust me, you won't die. You have a Sun Avatar, a buffed Quincy, and a Moab glue. There's like no way you can lose to this. For round 80, all we have to do is wait a few years for the ZOMG to show up, and then just use a Storm of Arrows when it pops into Moabs. The blue Moabs. That will absolutely destroy it, and we can move on to round 81. 81 is a pretty easy round. All we gotta do is use a Rapid Shot when the big clump of BFBs from the bottom side shows up, just so we can kill it as fast as possible and not waste any time. And then for 82, ooh, that was a bad voice crack, for 82, you don't really have to do like anything in particular. I would just recommend using a Storm of Arrows on the first few fortified BFBs when they pop into fortified Moabs, because that's the scariest part of this round by far. And then for 83, 175% required, you do have to use a Rapid Shot on the large swarm of Moabs. Just, just do that. If you don't, there's a good chance you die, because it'll get seemingly pretty close, like it does here.
And then on 84, I'd personally recommend using a rapid shot just off cooldown, just to clear out the mobs as fast as possible. And if you'd like, you can use a Storm of Arrows as well. Here I use it because I'm actually terrified and I don't really want to lose right now. So, yeah. If you do want to lose, I guess you could just not. And then, with just $75 to spare, usually it's different, I might have cash bugged here, you should be able to afford the Permabrew. And now, our Permabrewed Quincy and Permabrewed Sun Avatar should go absolutely crazy on these last 15 rounds. Quincy is personally my favorite tower to pair with Permabrew, so yeah, just watch the insides melt. And now, we'll just buy a few more towers that synergize pretty well with Permabrew. Two Moab Shredders, and a Overdrive. But first, we'll buy both Moab Shredders on the left side, right over here. You desperately want it to be in Permabrew's range, and this guy should go as like top right as possible as you can fit it in that corner over there. And we'll not we won't be getting white hot spikes because AMD is permanent and allows it allows all of the spikes to pop leads, so white hot is completely useless. Mob Shredder is mostly just for a little bit of extra DDT defense because even with Quincy, Permabrew, and Sun Avatar, DDTs are still a bit sketch. The second Mob Shredder should go as top right as possible, and ideally it's in the Permabrew range. If it's not, I'm not sure what happens. I've never had it where it's not. So yeah, just make sure it is in the Permabrew range. This guy will be a 130 as well. And on round 90, I guess if you want to use either of Quincy's abilities because you're scared of DDTs, go for it, but shouldn't be needed. Sun Avatar absolutely wrecks them. And now, get Relentless Glue on that Moa Blue from earlier, just so we have a bit of extra help with the cleanup, even though it's already really good. And then, just for like a tiny, tiny amount of damage. This guy will end up doing like 5k total, it's not too much, but I guess it helps a little bit. We'll place an overdrive right over here. If I can actually fit it. And get him to a 204. Anyone who goes middle cross path overdrive has something wrong with them. Ninety-three should get absolutely wrecked because the DDTs aren't not they're just not an issue. Right now at least. Because they do become an issue on ninety-five, we want them to be glued, and our glue cannot see camo. So get a cleansing foam and set them right on this little circle over here. That is that like a little wind fan turbine thingy? I don't know. And get a second cleansing foam right over here and set them on this rock. They should be able to hit the DDTs, because their hitboxes are way bigger than it seems like they should be. And on 94, just because we want to stat pad Quincy a little bit, use a rapid shot, and I guess you could use a storm of arrows if you'd like. Ninety-five should get absolutely destroyed by our setup, but if you want to stat pad Quincy, like I very much want to stat pad Quincy, and you feel a little bit scared, just rapid shot, everything dies. Everything is dead. Nothing will survive. And then if you want to stat pad Quincy even more, and the best option I found anyway, is to buy an overclock right over here, and we'll be using it just about a grand total of twice. Rapid shot the ZOMGs on 96, just to be 100% safe, and to stat pad Quincy a little bit. Look at this incredible overdrive. Not even 1,500 pops.
On 97, if you'd like to use a little bit of cleanup Storm of Arrows just to, like, murder the insides of the fortified UMGs, feel free to do that because they do look a little bit scary here, and I don't think it's possible for them to leak, but it looks like they could. Once the left fortified BFBs turn the bend, overclock Quincy, and use his rapid shot when the first few fortified BFBs pop into fortified Moabs. Watch that right side get absolutely erased. Like, it might as well not exist anymore. And the left side gets destroyed pretty well, too. And then for 99, just to be safe, overclock Quincy again. And this round can look a bit scary, so Storm of Arrows, if you'd like. I personally do that here. And watch round 100 get erased. All we have to do here is just overclock Quincy the instant it comes off cooldown, and once it comes off cooldown, just rapid shot. Watch that bad layer get absolutely destroyed, and watch the insides also get destroyed. If you've done this correctly, and trust me, it is a lot, so good job, you should now have your Mesa Black Border with a very, very awesome strategy. I hope this guide helped you out in some way. Have a nice rest of your day, and goodbye.